she stood translucent in ethernal. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Aarons. And I'm Carly Bird. Week 84. Week 84. Happy Thanksgiving as we kind of roll right into the Thanksgiving holiday. And what better time than kind of get into the festivities while telling some scary stories? Um, really, I want to kind of roll right into this bad boy tonight with, let me pull this up here, is our scary thing in the news. And I thought this was kind of interesting because this is not just a, a, a fictional thing of, of ghosts, spirits, aliens. This is State Farm. State Farm, that's an insurance Issuing company. a warning. Issuing a warning to everyone that the insurance giant last year paid over $196 million in reparations, not reparations, I'm sorry, that's for Native American African people, um, $196 million in claims because of fires and turkeys. Oh my gosh. So they paid out last year one million nine hundred. And six million dollars for over 2,210 grease or cooking fire claims in November and December were the top months for fire claims in the United States. It's because people cook when they don't know what the heck they're doing. It's because people do the the, the turkey thing where mm. they dunk the frozen turkey in like liquid hot grease to do a deep fry and it just causes chaos yeah. and devastation. Yeah. So um, I just think it's absolutely insane. The average claim for the average claim paid by the company for fires last year at this time, guess how much it was per claim? Per claim? Mm -hmm. Like 200,000. Close for 2,000 claims, it was about $71,000. On average, if you catch fire with a turkey. Well, 71,000 yeah, average. And, and this is how I look at this, honestly. That means if you have a fire in your house, yeah. on average, it's going to be upwards of $71,000 worth of damage. Right. So right. there's ne there was never a little one when they're saying that's the average, which right. is absolutely insane the amount of devastation that they're doing with this. Um, it's like burning the actual whole house down. Yes. State Farm advises home cooks to keep an eye on whatever they are cooking and warns against using stove or, or stove top when sleepy or after consuming alcohol. So apparently <laughs> they're the assuming that they're you're just guzzling alcohol Everybody's and that's why the house gets it. it. Well, honestly, think about it. How like kind of like relaxed and nonchalant you are about stuff. And if maybe even like you put a paper towel on your stovetop or something like because you're just like, oh, I'm going to dry my hands off. And then you like toss your paper towel and like turn around and you're drunk as shit. Mm -hmm. And you catch on fire all of a sudden. I just think that's absolutely hilarious that this company is giving out basically tips and tricks on how to cook. You know, keep your lid nearby. Don't yeah. drink. Don't right. run with scissors. All this other stuff because right. we don't want to keep paying money. Right. When in doubt, get out. State Farm says when you leave close... When you leave, close the door. So basically it's talking about if fire does not go out or you do not feel comfortable <laughs> sliding the lid over the pan, please do not throw water on it. Obviously. It's a grease fire. You Obviously. have to tell America this and you deal with these people on phone calls. Oh, all day. So do not throw water on that fire. Get everyone out of the home and call the fire department from outside. For an oven fire, turn off the heat and keep the door closed. When in doubt, get out. State Farm says when you leave, Close the door behind you to help contain the fire and call 911. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious that they had to remind people of the obvious here. And just the amount of money that they're paying out is insane. Like how many, like you've heard the, the wife said with the rumor, about, you know, if you're going to do a deep fried turkey, do it outside. Yeah. All this other stuff. Yeah. Make sure it's not frozen when you dunk it in liquid, you know. Oh my gosh. When you dunk, like, how so, about this? How about keep a fire extinguisher nearby? But I love that people don't know like with that with the grease fire. Yeah. Like do not throw water on a grease fire. Oh it makes it worse. A towel or something like that, you throw over it to, to smother it. Yeah. But you do not throw water on it because right. it'll just explode. Right. And that's why, like, usually, guys, if you don't know this, I'm doing PR for them. Okay, here we go. You don't take a frozen turkey and you put it in liquid hot grease because ice is water. And then when that shit hits the grease. It's a bomb. Yeah, it explodes, which is probably what happens. And a lot of times, I was going to show you this YouTube video. It was a little graphic. This guy tries to do a deep fried turkey in the middle of his kitchen. He puts all that there. He drops it and explodes. I'm not going to show you the video, but it's just Ew. like, how dumb could you be to, like, try to do that in the middle of your kitchen? Ugh. Um People are so, insane. Anyway, not a ghost story, but it's scary to see the stupidity of people. So I thought that kind of like is a scary thing in the news because there are a lot of dumb people out there. Also, 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 it's perfect timing because um, I know y'all will probably be listening after this show has been aired, uh, which is after Thanksgiving. But for us, Thanksgiving is happening tomorrow. So, Tommy, I just had a quick question for you. What is the most 
Um, what is your favorite dish that you look forward to the most during Thanksgiving holiday? Hmm. If it's so Vicky, out of all the families, Vicky's probably the best cook. And it's just because she was like a professional and that's with my mom, me, everybody like she's really good. Like she takes it to like a level that it should not be taken to. Uh, her roast beef stuff can be really good. Yeah. I, I still like like green bean casserole done right where it's not mushy, but crisp, it's your favorite. But when it's crispy green beans, it has to be Gross. crispy, has to be crispy, fresh green beans. And the idea is like it's just a little bit of sauce. And when people mess up why it's gross is because it's just like everything's mushy and soggy. You got to make sure everything's clean, everything's crisp. And they use like canned green beans. Yeah, don't or, use canned green beans. Uh, <laughs> fresh green beans, you break them up, you put the onions on top, and then you use a little bit of mushroom sauce, a little, like a dab of it. You want the flavor of the mushrooms, but you don't want it to be soup. And uh -huh. I think that's where it gets everything, everyone mad. Yeah. You put the ingredients together at the last minute. That way, everything's separate in the yeah. dish. It's not like all congealed. Right. Um, so are you a ham person or are you a turkey person for Thanksgiving? Honestly, with Vicky, and I think you've gone to Vicky's once at least. I've gone roast, to her house like the roast beef seven years is, in a row. Okay, then you already know my answer then. Which I'm is, asking no, so that we... Which is roast beef. All right, roast beef. Because that's what wow. she's had. Wow. I mean, I guess she always has roast She's had roast beef, but she also I provides. Beef. She provides. It's beef. All the meats. It's a cow. And that's why I was asking because she literally provides all the meats every single know. year. She provides okay. turkey, beef, even chicken and ham. So mm -hmm. just wondering. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. that's my answer. It is beef. I like the beef. Um, turkey it can sometimes be good, but it's really hard to do turkey correctly. Uh, it gets really dry. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to experiment too, honestly. It's supposed to be a meal. It's supposed to be fun. Mm -hmm. I did a smoked turkey one year. That was hard as shit. I think I smoked it for, I think you were in the picture at that time, but we smoked it for a day and some change. Turned out really good, but then it gets my mind to thinking of, can it be too much work? Like if you're going to spend three days on a meal, it's like, it's just, it's great. Is it really worth it for like, you know, 30 it's minutes? It's worth paying it. Like that's the thing is like, to me, it's like, if like it's just something, buy it. yeah, if it's something like that, like if it's going to be just a steak you throw on the grill, that's gonna be hard for me to be like, oh, this is worth it because I can make that. When right. it's like, I made this barbecue that took me six days to prepare. I'll pay you for that, whatever price, because right. I'm not spending six. Pay fucking like fifty dollars a plate yeah. instead of just like or spending the past six days. Some of those desserts slaving that you over have that. to like. Oh, uh, was it called like a flame No, um, what's that really what's hard? Meat? What's that? Oh God, sorry. What's that really hard baked dish? Really hard baked yeah, dish. Yeah, a souffle. Oh, like a souffle, a quiche, a custard. <laughs> Thing that's really hard to make because you have to whip it in like a copper pan and right, stuff right, like that, right, let right, it rise. Right. I'll go there, I'll I'll pay you to make that for me because right. that's like so much freaking work. Right. Sushi. You could kill yourself if you don't do raw fish correctly. Right. Just pay. I'll pay a professional exactly. just to do that. You exactly. know, there's just certain dishes where it just makes sense, I think, in my mind. Same. I agree. Yeah. I think I don't I'm not really getting any Thanksgiving food this this year. Well, so you, you never do, really. You work every Thanksgiving, right? No, I always get Thanksgiving food. Every year, this is gonna be my first year ever not having a Thanksgiving dinner. What do you mean? What do I mean? That's gonna be my first Thanksgiving not having a Thanksgiving dinner. I don't know how else to say it. No, oh. well, that's depressing. I know, but um, what I probably usually look forward to is um, my mom always does like, well, she does. She goes back and forth every year. One year she'll make turkey, and then the next year she'll do like a honey baked like ham, and I really like the salty sweet flavor of like the ham and that's probably what i look forward to the most because um i honestly don't eat ham any other time of the year except for like on thanksgiving day when my mom makes it which is like once a year so i mean i do eat like pork but i mean like 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 actual ham chop you should go yeah. to your mom's tomorrow after you're done working oh uh, i can't i don't no. get off until six and then i have to pack oh you gotta pack yeah she's going she got ponies all weekend yeah um so that's awesome so anyway uh what is our story for the evening all right so our story has um some thanksgiving vibes to it but also it kind of makes me think about the christmas holidays which are coming up as well it literally oh my gosh can you think about this christmas is in like 30 days it's depressing 30 days that's crazy to me i like literally can't even comprehend it all right so this story everybody prepare yourselves for the tale of many thanks my family had a tradition that we would all exchange one gift on thanksgiving day to bring good fortune for the coming holiday season we never gave anything fancy just candy cds socks or maybe a book 
The week before Thanksgiving, we would all gather to ga- gather together and our f- names would go into a hat. Like Secret Santa. But we didn't hide it from each other. We would all reach in and pick a name. For a little more context, I'm the middle child, a boy, and sandwiched between two older and younger sisters. Plus, our only remaining grandmother had it just removed in with us. I moved in with us. All six of our names go into the hat and fate decides the rest. So, here is how it all goes down. My youngest sister, Riki, went first. She got mom. Mom picks next and gets grandma. Grandma then picks my name. Great, I say to myself. Another pair of socks. My turn to pick and I get my older sister, Claire. She then picks dad, which means dad gets my younger sister. After our big ceremony, I was excited to start thinking about what to get for Claire. I had a week and I wanted to not only for it to be awesome, but like beyond awesome. You see, whenever my sister would get me a gift, it was always some amazing, thoughtful CD from a band I'd never heard of or a book of short stories that would somehow always relate perfectly to my life. I felt like I could never give her something as thoughtful, but damn it, I was going to try. I spent the next few days trying to figure out what to get. The problem is, it seems like she had everything. How am I going to find something that she likes? She is the deep thinking artistic type. So what, like a candle? I was getting frustrated. I kept thinking I could get her a cool book, but with the amount that she reads, how could I find something she hasn't already read? Then it hit me. There was an old antique bookstore in town that I've always wanted to visit, but never have. I thought they must have some old, weird, obscure something that she would like, right? Two days later, Thanksgiving, I decided to, two days, I'm sorry, two days before Thanksgiving, I decided to go down to the bookstore. I've never gone here before because this place was always, had always given me the creeps. I don't know what it is about it though. There's nothing traditionally creepy about it. It's packed in between a small strip mall, between a check cashing place and an adult novelty store. Maybe I was just nervous someone would see me and think I was going into adult pursuits too instead of the bookstore, but nevertheless, this was the time to go. When I entered the bookstore, I was immediately overcome with the scent of incense and books. It felt almost welcoming. I wish it didn't. I wish there was something that told me just to turn around and leave. Welcome. An older, delicate voice came from around a stack of books. For some reason, I wasn't expecting this, and let out sort of a peep noise. Sorry to startle you, child. Are you looking for something? Or do you hope something finds you? Um, what? I thought. Sometimes books just find where they're meant to be. It's almost like she heard me. I'm looking for something for my sister, I replied. Ah, sister. Excellent. Wander these aisles and you will find what you are looking for, my child. My books will let you know which one is the perfect gift. And with that, she sort of just glided toward the back room where I could hear her rustling papers about. Now, I'm in this creepy bookstore with a lady that is loving on her books way too much and I don't leave. I mean, honestly, why would I? I start to rummage through the stacks of books, the aisles of books, the mounds of books. They were everywhere. How was I going to find anything interesting? Towards the front of the store, all the books seemed to be relatively newer, nothing I would call antique. So I wandered, slowly making my way toward the back of the store. The further I went, the older the books started to get. Not only that, I knew anything Not that I knew anything about the titles I saw, but you could tell from the older broken leather of the covers that these books had seen some mileage on them. All these looked cool, but what did I know about picking out something she would like? I would probably just have as much luck picking at random and finding something that way. Right when I had that thought is when I saw it. A small leather book bound in twine called Many Thanks. It was written on the spine. 
Damn it, if that storekeeper wasn't right. It felt like this book found me. I pulled the book from the shelf to finally have a look at its cover. Many thanks to the personal diary of Harriet Luella. I have no idea who Harriet Luella is or was, but I was intrigued. I began to untie the twine. Uh, untie the twine? Oh my god. You scared me, I exclaimed. So sorry, my child, but it seems as if your book has found you. Uh, what is it? I asked. Ah, that is the diary of a young woman that grew up around here. Every year on Thanksgiving, she would write about her year and what she was grateful for. Are you kidding me? This is perfect, I thought. It certainly is the perfect gift. Excuse me, I said. Can I help you with anything else? No thanks, I replied. Then I quickly paid for the diary. There was no need to linger around. This was the gift. Like I actually found something cool that Claire would go crazy for. She loves this type of stuff. I couldn't wait to get home to have a peek at the diary myself. When I arrived home, I was nearly to the door. I ran up to my room and got a sneak peek of the diary before I gave it to Claire. But I was met at the door with an angry father informing me that my chores had been neglected. Get your ass to work on those chores before I get mine to work on you. Jesus. That sounds familiar. Dad. Damn. <laughs> Dad was terrible with threats. Watch the show. <laughs> it was like he lost his nerve halfway through and had no idea how to finish what he started. Regardless, I understood the threat and got to work. I was so busy, it wasn't until later that night that I finally got to take a glimpse at the diary. I swear it looked like something out of a movie. I was sitting on my bed, covers over my head and a flashlight in hand. I untied the twine that bound the diary and opened the cover. November 23rd, 1984, age eight. Today, grandmother gave me this book. She says it's called a diary. She said every year on this day, I should write in it. She said I need to write what I'm thankful for because the years can be hard. I'm thankful for mommy and daddy. I'm thankful for grandmother. I'm thankful for my brothers, Daniel and George, even though they're mean to me. She goes on to talk about the year's harvest and crops and getting ready for winter. So I kind of skimmed through the rest of this entry. Same goes for the following entries as well. Just lots of thanks and talking about the year's harvest. I guess when you're living in colonial New England, there isn't much else to talk about. I jumped ahead and when I saw, until I saw something interesting. November 24th, 1689, age 13. This year has been horrible. What am I supposed to be thankful for? Father died while out hunting. My brothers have both become ill and bedridden. I spend all of my days taking care of them. Mother and grandmother stay up late in the kitchen cooking up remedies to help my brothers, but nothing works and they never let me help them. Mother says I'm too young. Grandmother says I need to wait a few more years, but I hate it here. I looked at my watch. It was already two in the morning. How did I get so late? I didn't think I was reading the diary that long. I figured I could read one more entry before I should finally try to get some sleep. I mean, I was finally getting something interesting. November 23rd. N I keep wanting to say 19. 1690. Age 14. Daniel has passed and I feel the priest is here daily for the moment George passes too. Mother and grandmother say I need to be strong, but it's so hard. They say sacrifices must be made if we are to continue to survive. I pray every night for relief. I pray that things will get better. Still, I am here thankful for my mother and my grandmother. I'm thankful George is still with us. I'm thankful I have survived another year. It goes on for a bit, so I decided it was time to sleep. I'll let Claire finish it and tell me all about it later. It was finally Thanksgiving morning, and I was so excited to give Claire her gift. Riki gave her gift to mom first. Riki gave her gift to mom first, a goofy looking turkey picture made from a handprint. Mom gave grandma her gift. Grandma got me a shirt that said, official, official pumpkin pie tester. I think I would have preferred the socks, but now it's my turn. I grabbed the diary and handed it to Claire. As she unwrapped the book, my heart was pumping. 
Whoa, Claire said. Do you like it? I asked. At this point, she had already unbound the twine and started reading the first page. She was transfixed with the diary. So, do you like it? I repeated. This is fascinating. Yes, I love it. Where did you find something like this? I briefly told her about the bookstore and how I spent hours sifting through stacks, aisles, and mounds of books to find her the right one. Maybe I exaggerated a bit, but she was so focused on the diary, but she was so focused on the diary, I don't think she noticed. The rest of the gift giving went well, and now was the part of the day where we all just kind of waited around till the food was ready. Riki was off playing with some new toy she got. Mom, Dad, and Grandma were in the kitchen getting our annual feast prepared, and Claire sat in the living room reading the diary. Every now and then she would say something like, This girl is so young, and she's so worried she isn't helping enough. It's so sad. Then she would just get back to reading. After what felt like years, it was time to eat. We all sat around the dining room table, feast ready for consumption, when Claire spoke up. Before we eat, I'd like to read an entry from the diary I got today. She looked at me and smiled. I think it will put a little perspective on how fortunate we really are. November 27th, 1692, age 16. Another year has passed and life seems to get even harder. With just myself, mother and grandmother, it's difficult to keep up with everything that needs to be done. We all work extra hard, but since there are no men around, the people whisper. Life has become so rotten in the village. We try our best to live a quiet life. It feels as if every year that goes by, I have less to be thankful for, but this year isn't the case. I have learned so much. I'm thankful for all the sacrifices that have been made so that we can remain here. I'm thankful for mother and grandmother. They saw that I was ready and they have opened my eyes to wonderful new possibilities. This year has been tough, but we will persist. Our rituals keep us safe for now. I have seen others become victims of accusations. I have seen what becomes of them. They're fucking witches. I keep telling myself our rituals will keep us safe for now. Though, through all of this, I am thankful for another year. At this point, everyone in the table had naturally lowered their heads and tried to absorb the story. Without looking away from the diary, my sister spoke. Oh, there seems to be a little more. December 10th. 1692. Tonight's the night. There is no more being quiet. There is no more hiding. There is no more running. They will be coming for us, but I have prepared for this. I've read all of grandmother's books. On this night, the longest night, my body will burn so my soul may live. At that very moment, it felt like all of the energy was sucked of the room. Everything went quiet. I looked at Claire. She was still reading from the book, but there was no sound coming from her mouth. I frantically looked between the rest of my family. There was something wrong. There were all, they were all staring at Claire. Not moving, no expression, just staring. I tried to call out to my dad, but nothing came out when I spoke. I tried screaming, nothing. I hadn't noticed until now, but I looked around the room and it was gone. Like everything was gone except me and my family sitting at the dining room table with a dark empty void. The food sat there like everything was gone except me and my family sitting there in the dining room table in a dark empty void. The food sat on the table rotting. I felt sick. I looked back at my family. I tried to scream again. They were still staring at Claire but they looked like they were rotting too. That's when Claire finally looked up from the diary and straight into my soul. Claire had the most beautiful greenest eyes you ever saw. The eyes that looked back at me were devoid of all color. Whatever was staring back at me was not Claire. The whole time her lips were moving, there was no sound coming out. I was lost. I didn't know what to do. I tried to get up and go to my parents, but I couldn't move. I tried to scream again and still nothing. I began to feel empty, hopeless, like there was no point to try to bother anymore. Claire, or whatever it was, started laughing. A low rumble that developed into a high-pitched cackle. For whatever reason, this snapped me out of my slump. I needed to do something. I gathered every ounce of strength, energy, and hope I had left and lifted out of my chair. Everything went dark. 
The next thing I remember is my entire family standing over me as I laid on the floor of the dining room with a massive headache. You all right, buddy? My dad asked. What the hell just happened? A moment ago, I could swear I was watching my family's bodies being devoured by maggots, but now they look fine. And now they're asking me if I'm okay. Oh no, he said that. Hold on. Out of time, Sam. What the hell just happened? A moment ago, I could swear I watched my family's bodies being devoured by maggots, but now they looked fine. And now they're asking me if I'm okay? I could still feel the emptiness that that hopelessness that consumed me, but it seemed to be slowly fading. My dad helped me off the floor and I got situated back in my seat. Once we were all situated, but it seemed to be slowly fading. My dad helped me off the floor and I got situated back into my seat. Once we were all seated again, dad made some dumb joke about the situation and everyone started grabbing, grabbing some food. I didn't have much of an appetite anymore. I suddenly thought of Claire. Was she okay? I looked over to her and made eye contact. I was quickly relieved when I was met with her beautiful green eyes. Thanks again for the gift, she spoke with a smirk. And at the moment, I saw a flash of darkness behind the stair, behind her stare. Claire never again gave me a thoughtful gift. It's as if she doesn't even know me anymore. She moved away a year ago and we only see each other on the holidays now. And every time I see her, I swear her eyes are getting darker. And that was the tale of many things. So it sounds like, I mean, it definitely sounds like a witch's coven um, yeah. with a journal. She put her soul into the book. It's a right. little Voldemort-y, uh, Harry Potter-esque thing there. Right. And then whoever read the book, basically, was possessed by her. Exactly. Yeah. Really, <clears throat> really creepy. Do you think the girl then is just 100% possessed then? No, I don't think she's 100%. I don't think she was 100% possessed in that moment. I think she was taken over over time because you know how sometimes in in stories you can be taken over a little bit more a little bit more and they take over more and more and more more of your life i think she probably continued to like live a normal life but with like a little bit of intermittent possession Mm. as time goes on eventually the witch is going to take over Hmm. that's my perspective because he says each year her eyes come back a little bit blacker that is creepy. Yeah. That was a really good story. That story was found on Creepy Pasta. And I also would like to talk about the drink of this evening because that's why I was slurring my words every once in a while. It's because I've been drinking this since like five and it is almost seven o'clock or eight o'clock. It's called, it's a wine actually. It's a red wine. It's called Daring Escape. It's 2017 Paso Robles. Robles red wine anyway it has a picture of little red riding hood and the big bad wolf holding a basket and this is probably the best wine i've had in like a really long time it's actually really good it's delicious i have no other way to say it except you know how sometimes when you go to like wine tastings like at like super bougie places and they go you'll notice here that there are some hints of the white oak and the cherry pine trees and a little bit of lavender scented with rose petals honestly that's what this tastes like. All those things I just described. It's delicious. I got it as a gift from a person recently. And um, probably going to chug the rest of it tonight. Well, that'd be good for your, for, the, for the other thing that you have going on too. Right. Um, I do have, I do guys actually have one more story to do. It's a small story. I found this actually on the same article. I thought it was a fun little story. The problem was it was like tiny and this story that she had was too long for my English. So <laughs> I was going to just write just, just a, did a, say it was a 10 minute long read, <clears throat> but I think yeah. we turned it into 15 minutes. <clears throat> Time now for the tale of Thanksgiving in a small town. Once in a sleepy town that nestled among the sprawling woods, there sat a grand forgotten mansion that held a haunted secret. It was said that on every Thanksgiving Eve, the ghostly presence of a lost, of a long lost family would roam its halls. Generations ago, the Van Buren family resided in that mansion. 
Their Thanksgiving celebration legendary, but one faithful year, a bitter feud tore them asunder. During a, I got that word. During, a, <laughs> during their during particular a heated Thanksgiving dinner, an argument spiraled into a tragic accident. Oh no! The family's youngest daughter, Emily, met her untimely demise. The victim of a terrible misunderstanding that shattered the family forever. You're whispering. Since that dreadful night, the mansion stood abroad, its halls echoing the ghost cries and the sorrowful whispers of the dead. Locals mutter of a curse that imposed on the Van Buren spirits within this audacity Thanksgiving night in an endless loop of tragedy, death, and despair. On this particular Thanksgiving Eve, a group of daring friends sought thrilling adventures. They ventured into the deceptive mansion, drawn by curiosity and the thrill of the unknown. Armed with the flashlights and the trembling bravery, they crossed the threshold into the ghostly aberration. Oh my goodness. Aberration. I don't know how to say aberration. Aberration. As they explored the mansion's <laughs> shadowy corridors, a sense of foreboding hung heavy in the air. Pictures on the wall seemed to be watching their moves, and an eerie chill was over and above the air. I said that wrong. <laughs> over and above the air. <laughs> We're going to just leave that. In the dining hall, a spectacular... This we're going to fix. In the dining hall, a spectral table stood adorned. What? A spectral table? S-P-E-C-T-R-A-L. Say that. Spell it again. Spectral. Spell it again. S-P-E-C-T-R-A-L. A table stood adorned <laughs> with remnants of lavish feasts. Plates lay scattered. Chairs overturned, frozen in time as if the family had abruptly vanished mid-meal. A chill swept through the room as the air thickened with a haunting presence. Suddenly, a faint giggle echoed down the hallway, followed by soft sobs that seemed to emanate from the walls themselves. The friends exchanged nervous glances, their hearts pounding in unison. I was going to say unson. Then from the darkness emerged ghostly apparitions, a family frozen in internal agony. Emily, the youngest daughter, appeared before them, her pale figure shimmering with <laughs> eternal glow. Ethereal? Ethereal. Ethereal glow. <laughs> ethereal glow. Tears streamed down her translucent cheeks as she reached out, pleading for release from this mansion's curse. Please help, save me. The friends gasped in horror as the spectral family reenacted their final moments, the heated argument, the tragic misunderstanding, and Emily's heart-wrenching departure from this mortal realm. The chilling scene played out before their eyes, a haunting reminder of the family's eternal torment burnt into the back of their skulls forever. Terrified and trembling, the friends fled the mansion, their hearts heavy with the weight of the Van Buren's tragic tale. As they raced into the night, they vowed never to return to that accursed place. From that Thanksgiving Eve onward, the mansion stood in solemn silence, a frozen in time of the tragedy that happened. Its secrets buried within its crumbling walls, while the spirits of the Van Buren family continued to roam, trapped in an endless loop of death and despair. Happy Thanksgiving. I'd like to spend my Thanksgiving in a mansion. I nailed that story. Only a few mistakes. <laughs> Eternal. <laughs> 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 she stood translucent in Eternal. <laughs> I don't know, the whole beginning of that story, I just couldn't get it out of my mind. It sounded like a country song. What was the name of the story again? Uh, that was the tale of... Sorry, let me get it up here. A Haunted Thanksgiving in a Small Town. In a Small Town. That's literally... I was like, oh no, this is going to be... I'm just going to be thinking about country songs this entire time. And I did. Every word you said, train is loose and no way in a small town. I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving with loved ones. We'll be back next week with a a water kelpie story. Yes, we have the a Kapow Ushka. Lined up water kelpies. We'll see you next time on Spirits and Ghost Stories. Bye. Bye.